Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand AP Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to learn about Law of Probability number 1, which lays the foundation for all of the discussion that happens in Section 2, Probability and Statistics. But before we jump into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to this preview lecture on the topic of Laws of Probability Part 1, which is a subsection of Section 2, Probability and Statistics. Law of Probability Number 1. Probability can be defined as the ratio of occurrence of an event A to all possible events in a sample space S, and mathematically is simply the ratio of the number of times A can occur to the number of times the events in the complete sample space can occur. So a couple of important concepts over here. What is a sample space? Okay, sample space is the total possibilities of all the events that can occur, right? For example, if you are tossing a twine, your sample space is the two outcomes, which are heads or tails, right? Sorry, if you're um, tossing one coin. Now, if you're tossing two coins, then you can get both of them as tails, you can get both of them as heads, and you can get one of them as tail, the other one as heads. Okay, so your sample space now becomes this. Now, when we talk about event A, let's say event A is a subset of uh, one of these um, um, events, right? So, of, of the sample space. So, I'll say that, okay, event A is a scenario when I get both coins as tails, or I get one of them as tails and one of them as head, right? Then I have this as event A, whereas if I get only, if I get both of them as head, then this one is event A, and so on. So that's the concept of sample space and probability, how it is related to probability. As a rule, probability is expressed as a real number between zero and one. So the minimum value of probability is equal to zero and the maximum value of probability of a given event is equal to one. So if the probability of A is equal to zero, it basically means that it is an impossible event. It does not lie in the sample space, right? So coming back to our example of uh, tossing two coins, right? So we had tails, tails, we have head, head, we have head, tails, and tails, and head. Now, these are all the possible outcomes, right? So what we are ruling out is that, okay, the coin lends uh, perfectly vertically, right? So you neither get a head or you neither get a tail, right? So that is, or, or both, of, both of those coins do that, or maybe one of the coin um, does that and the other one ends up with a tail, right? So you don't have a scenario where you have just one tail, right? So that will be an impossible event. So this type of a scenario, it doesn't even lie in the sample space. So that's an impossible event. And a definitive event is something that is for sure uh, to happen, right? So if my sample space, if my event actually belongs to the entire sample space, then you can see that n of s divided by n of s will basically be equal to one. So I can definitely say that if the event belongs to this entire sample space, right? If the sample space represents all possible sets of events, then yeah, definitely one of them is gonna happen. So that's why the highest um, probability is equal to one. Let us now take a look at an example in order to better understand this law of probability number one. We have a scenario where a fair die is rolled once and we are being asked to calculate the probabilities of these events. Now, a die, for those of you who don't know, well, it's uh, basically a cube, okay, and a lot of board games use it. So there are six sides of this cube, um, up, down, left, right, uh, front, and back, and on each of these sides, you have basically dots, okay? So that's basically what a die is. So we are being asked to find the outcomes, the probabilities of these outcomes that you end up with, uh, when you roll it, you end up with a six, or you end up with numbers less than six, you end up with an odd number or an even number. So before we look at these individual properties, it is important for us to define the sample space. 
Now the sample space, as I mentioned, it basically includes the six possibilities, right? So you can have one, two, three, four, um, five and uh, six, right? So you can have six different outcomes and uh, these can include one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the total number of outcomes within the sample space is equal to six. Now, when we calculate these individual prop properties, then we will basically do N of A divided by N of S. Now, N of S, number of possible outcomes in the sample space is equal to six. So the denominator will always remain six. The only thing that will change depending on the option that we're looking at will be the numerator. So let's go through it. For option A, we have just one event that we end up with a six. So the number of events is equal to one. So the probability is one divided by six. As I explained, N of S will always remain six. The only thing that will change is the numerator. Now for less than six, the possibilities are one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now the number of possible um, occurrences are five. So we have a probability of five by six. Now for odd, we have one, three, and five. Okay, so which is equal to three possibilities. So three divided by six. And for even again, we have two, four, and six. So three possibilities, so three divided by six. So you can see that by making use of law of probability and defining the sample space, defining the event space. Okay, so this is the event space, right? For, um, for A. For this particular option it's only six and this is for b where you have one two three four and five so by defining the sample space and the event space you can actually determine these probabilities pretty easily in this lecture we learned about law of probability number one which introduces the concept of probability scale it mathematically defines probability as a ratio of frequencies we discussed the concept of sample space and we also learned that the lowest probability of any event is zero and the highest probability is one. We also did a couple of practice problems in order to apply these concepts. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCS FE Electrical and Computer Exam Specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well reviewed course comes with an amazing 30 day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 